French, sir. Major Gannon is here. Show him in. Yes, sir. Major Gannon. Could you please tell me the meaning of this, sir? Meaning of what, Major Gannon? I'm not a mind reader. You know perfectly well what I'm talking about. These orders. Directing Major Britton to take the squadron up in my place and ordering me to report here. Oh, that. Sit down. Okay, if you prefer to stand. They grounded me. Why? You're being transferred. The papers came through this morning. Alaska? Glad Field? Pentagon requested replacements for the polar cap weather research. Operation Deep Freeze, they call it. I fly jets, remember? What am I going to do in a horse and buggy outfit like Operation Deep Freeze? You're slowing up, Lee. Your timing is off and getting worse. I needn't remind you, a jet costs in the neighborhood of three quarters of a million dollars. It's as bad as that, huh? Not bad at all for straight flying, Lee. But for jets or combat duty, a split second makes the difference. The brain works the same, it says pull out. But the reflexes just don't respond quickly enough. So for the good of the service... I yeah, know. Gonna endorse these? I will if you say so. You can always quit. Yeah, I know. Can I have a few days to think it over? Sure, sure, it's up to you. Come on, the bar's open. I'll buy a drink. There's a registered letter for you at the mail room, Major Gannon. They want your signature on it. Thank you. I'll pick it up. You got a registered letter for Major Gannon? Meet you in the lounge, Lee. Fine. Thanks to a little help from friends, I've been able to set myself up in business. Nothing pretentious, just a little nightclub with a dance floor about the size of a postage stamp and a stage just big enough for me to stand on and sing a number. So you can throw away your cross, mister. The one you've borne so long with so much hate. You'll not hear from me again. If I go down this time, I'll go alone. Not bad news, I hope. No. You look like you've been ordered to bail out over enemy-held territory. I have. Do me a favor, George. Dorsey's transfer papers. I decided to go to Ladd Field after all. Pick her up, follow her into land. Looks like a good place to store beer. Oh. Only 20 below in here now. Well, after you've been up here a while, you get to you don't notice it. I doubt if I'll be here that long. Captain, we got company. Fly, 
that jet, Sergeant. You wear it. <laughs> Jet man yourself, didn't you, Major? Yeah, too old. That's why they put me out to pasture. Well, Alaska isn't exactly a cow pasture, Major. We do have our moments, don't we, Cappy? Oh, that we do, sir. We do. Sergeant Cappy is an authority on Arctic survival. If he doesn't have the answer in his little black book, there isn't any. He was born here. Yeah. <laughs> I joined the Air Force to get out of Alaska and see the world. And look where I end up. <laughs> Service for you, Sergeant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Captain, the old press on the right engine's dropped. Check it, Major. Smoke it better. Better. Alpha Foxtrot 201 calling Lad Field, over. Lad Field to Alpha Foxtrot 201, come in. Right engine is on fire, burning badly, extinguisher ineffective, abandoning ship immediately. Position about 100 miles north, northeast of you, altitude 5,000 feet out. What does your little black book say about this, Sergeant? Well, let's not bother to look now. That wing tank will go any minute. This is Major Cantrell. Get the number two Cessna ready for immediate flight and have Lieutenant McGuire meet me in the briefing room immediately. Thank you. Attention, attention. Ready 953 for immediate takeoff.
It took you so long. We had a flat. Well, the next time you start an SOS, finish it before we find you. I meant you can't throw. Major Garrett. This isn't exactly the kind of weapon we planned for you, but welcome anyway. Thank you. Okay, fellas, get in. This car patch is getting a little too cold. Major, congratulations. That was some kind of a record rescue, wasn't it? Neat and nifty. Just routine. Routine. Plane crashes over Arctic Circle. Three men bail out. They found and returned to their base in less than two hours. That's not routine, Major. That is news. And I'm just the little girl to give it the proper coverage. You handle it any way you like, Mary. Public relations is your job. What's your hurry? Or am I being too inquisitive? No, I got to file a report. And when you file that one, there'll be another one. There always is of late. Mary, I... Save the bell. Hello, Cantrell. Yes, sir, right away. Colonel Nelson wants to see me. So do I, but he outranks me. How about a movie tonight? There's a good one on in Fairbanks. Mary, don't make it any tougher on me than it is. Who's making what tough for who? You know what you mean to me? Mm, I'm a nice guy with a nice shoulder to cry on. You mean a lot more than that, and you know it. But not enough more. Will you let me work it out in my own way? Want me to stop gunning for you, Brad? Not a chance. Go on, you mustn't keep the colonel waiting. Hello, Brad. Good job this afternoon. Thank you, sir. It's hard to get a good replacement like Major Gannon. Glad we didn't lose you. We're going ahead with Operation Deep Freeze. When do we start, sir? Immediately. You can start briefing your men at once. I want them to know why we're setting up a weather station on the polar cap. We've got to know it as well as we know Lad Field. I'll start briefing the men in the morning, sir. Is that all? That's all. Yes, Brownie, come in. The Major's here. Good. Pour a drink into him and get him thawed out for me. Hurry, Kura. This hook. Wear this for a respectable major. Not shoot too much skin. Easy, Kura. Gentle, like a man. Oh, give me that check. How do I look? Flight dress. Wrong face. He's too angry. Too hard. How's this? It's face of angel. <laughs> Hello, 
darling. Hi. Here's the check you sent me. Thanks just the same. I don't get it. It's simply that I don't need any more loans. From now on, I start paying you back. Good help. You like this kind of thing? Why not? Life's pretty dull otherwise. Gonna go on doing this the rest of your life? I hope not. I've got plans. Like what? An Air Force major who was born with money. Well, that's laying it right on the table. <laughs> yes, it is. I like the way your face is put together. You're quick up there. And you look very pretty in a uniform. So watch out. You know, you don't scare me. I don't think you're as bad as your publicity. But in case you are, I think I'll fly around you a while and look at the terrain. <laughs> Travel at your own risk. No okay. Now, here's our first line of defense. If attack comes, it'll most likely come over the polar cap. Here, the two strongest ideologies in this shrinking world oppose each other. And the Arctic regions between these two opposing ideologies will, in all probability, be the battleground. It stands to reason, then, that we get to know this terrain very well. For the difference between victory and defeat often lies in the usable knowledge of the battlefield upon which the two opposing forces meet. Weather has always been a vital factor in aerial warfare. But particularly so here in the Arctic regions, where nothing in the nature of weather is ever normal, according to the ordinary standards in the States. Here, a victory over the elements of nature is, in itself, somewhat of an achievement. So it's important, then, that we get to know more about the Arctic weather. Now, for that reason, we're establishing an experimental base on Ice Island, near the Polar Cap. We've known about this island for a long time. And although it is constantly moving, it's the nearest thing to a flat top you'll find in these waters. The experiment will be known as Operation Deep Freeze. Is there any questions? Those of you actually selected for Operation Deep Freeze will be briefed in detail later on. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Hutt. That is. That was a nice little speech, Major. Well, thank you. I understand you were in jets, Major. Do you like them? Is there anything else? Depends on the job you've got to do. Anything's better than flying a desk. Statistics bore me. Well, after you've been up here a while, you'll see that a desk begins to look pretty good. And as for statistics, Major, let me give you a little tip. You better start learning about the weather. Up here, it's your enemy. Alaska may be the top of the world, but it's the end of the world for a man who gets careless. I survived over Germany, Major Cantrell. And I survived over Korea. And I'm quite sure with the vast store of knowledge that you men have on the subject, that I will in time learn to survive in Alaska. However, in the meantime, what do you do around here for laughs? Depends on your sense of humor. Well, things in skirts usually amuse me. Well, then I suggest, Major, that you get used to comic books. Be up here in Fairbanks, a girl charges six bucks an hour just to talk to a man. Talk. Yeah, right after payday, it costs more. Well, I hope it's something more than the weather they talk about. Major Gannon. There's only one. We've had quite a time catching up with you. We want your picture. If I'd have known it, I'd have made it easier for you. Good. Shoot him out. Major Gannon, this is Lieutenant Ross. Mary's in charge of our public relations office. Maybe Alaska's not going to be as bad as I thought. If that's a request for a private conference, Major, I suggest you put it through channels. What channels? Suppose you start with Major Cantrell. In that case, I guess it's going to be a long, cold winter after all. Nice to meet you, Lieutenant. Major. You're a very swift young man. He's got a chip on his shoulder. You wouldn't be trying to prejudice me against him, would you? He got my back up. Well, get it down. He may help you work things out. Why didn't you show up last night, Brad? I called you a couple of times, Mary, and your line was busy. I hope I didn't ruin your evening. No, no, I washed out some stockings, read a book, really laughed it up. 
I hear you went to the Klondike Club. Yes, ma'am. See Virgie Rain? Well, I'm not denying it. Tell me, is it a, a monumental thing between you and Virgie now? I don't know, Mary. It's one of those things I'm trying to work out. I'm one of the others. Well, I'll give you a hand, Brad, by falling out of love with you. Or trying to. Hello there. Well, lucky you happened along. I need a briefing. Well, if it comes under the heading of public relations, Major, I'll do everything I can to help you. I think maybe personal relations would be more likely. Oh. This fellow Cantrell, engaged or something? Something is more like it. Why? Well, I had a mind to go dancing tonight, and I'd look pretty silly doing it by myself. Sounds very interesting, Major. What time could I pick you up? Eight o'clock. The Fair Apartments on McKinley Street. I'll find it. You won't get lost. Once I get this far, I know where I'm going. But you do, Major. Table over there, sir. Hey. Take that uniform off her and you really got something. A new hairdo. New man, too. What's the difference between a sourdough and a chichaco? Well, uh, a sourdough is an old timer. A chichaco is a tenderfoot. Next question. The Eskimo word, engaramorik. What does that mean? Well, when, a, when an Eskimo girl invites her boyfriend into her igloo, she says, engaramorik. Next question. And you and Cantrell, they're engaramorik? Shall we join them? Couldn't be you want to see us together, could it? Okay. Hello. Mary, you and Virgie know one another. I present Major Gannon, Virgie Rain. How do you do, Miss Rain? Welcome to the Club Klondike, Major Cannon. Well, the name is Gannon, with a G. Sorry, I promise. I'll never get it wrong again. Won't you sit down? Um, there's a custom here. The newcomers always dance with the owner of the club. Well, I'd be glad to. Where is he? He's right here. Would you excuse us? dancing bit. If that's a custom, it just started. She's just being hospitable. Where did you come up with this cannon business? Pull it out of a hat. Are there any other tricks in that hat of yours? Quite a few. Want to hear about them? Why not? Come on, let's talk. At six bucks an hour? You can have five minutes on the house. Hospitality. Waiter. Well? 
The years have made you better looking, Lee. You've lost that spoiled brat expression you wore as a kid. Thanks. I can't say they've changed you any. I take a little more time on my makeup. Is this the little business you wrote about in your letter? You forgot to mention it was a gold mine. How'd you do it? Well, let's say a friend died and left me a fortune. In other words, it's none of my business. I borrowed the money. The usual security, I suppose. What else have I got? In this rain business. Wasn't Gannon good enough? Oh, Lee, please don't make trouble. Trouble? I don't even know what you're talking about. Brad Cantrell. Are you in love with him? I think so. Why? You're doing all right. Yes, thanks to him. Yeah. Let's see. He's up to here and money, and you're all revved up, ready to take off with him. Is that it? Oh, you put it so nicely. Does he know you were married? Yes. To me? No. I didn't tell him what a stinker you were. Don't give me that. You know what you did? All right. How long does it take to forget? Forever. Please, I've released you from all financial responsibility on my behalf. The least you can do is get out of my life. Stop hounding. Beg me. I do beg you. Please forget it. Leave me alone, please. Relax. You don't even exist. Just marry him and get out of my life. I'm tired of looking at your name on my check stubs. Thanks. That's real sporting. May I come in? Why ask? You're in. Isn't our Alaskan hospitality wonderful? In less than ten minutes, Miss Rain has made you feel completely at home. It only took me five. She's right. She's a real expert. I'm sorry to freeze up the party, Lee, but I've suddenly latched onto a headache. Would you like to go home? Do you mind? I'm sure he'd be delighted. You know, the minute I saw Major Gannon, I felt that I'd met him before. Just as you did. You did know her before, didn't you? Uh, let's skip her. What about you? Why'd you say you wouldn't go out with me and then change your mind? Maybe sparks started flying. <laughs> you mean I set you on fire, huh? Maybe. No. No, you're, you're slow burning. You're like wet wood. A very flattering description. Thank you, Major, for a very pleasant headache. No, I can get him, work. No, Major. Not tonight. Tell me. What's underneath that coat? An officer and a gentleman? Or a woman? What is it you want, Mary? Just how well did you know her? She was my wife. Was? What happened? <laughs> That's the end of the free information. Please tell me, Leah. I've got to know all about her. You're crazy about Cantrell, aren't you? That's why I've got to know. Who is she? What is she? All, all we know is that she was an entertainer. Now she's running a nightclub. She works for a living, but let's not be snobbish. I'm not snobbish. I work for a living myself. Just one question. Is she good enough for Brad Kendra? Virgie Rain's a fine woman. I'm quite sure they'll be very happy. Good night, Mary. Hi, Skip. Oh, hi, Major. Major Gannon come in yet? No, sir, not yet. Say, Major Cantrell, could I ask you something? Sure. If you didn't know I was 21, how old would you say I looked? At a day over 20. 
19. Try to get off this older woman kick, Skip. This 26-year-old thinks she's too old for you. Not that one. I got another one now. Now, what are you worried about? This one's 30. <laughs> oh, Major Gannon, sir. How old would you say I look? I'd say around 28, 30. Do I, honest? Sure, with that cigar growing out of your face. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Did you send for me? Yeah. This afternoon, I want to check you out on instruments. Are you sending me back to school? Well, don't be insulted. We've got extraordinary conditions, minute-to-minute -minute weather, ice fog, whiteouts. Sounds like fun. If you get 131 ready, let me know when you're set. All right. Well, Major, something personal about Virgie Rain. Why don't you skip it? She should make you very happy. You should know. She used to be your wife. She told you about it. And very smart of her. In our divorce. My fault entirely. Gannon. You've probably been expecting this, Colonel, sir. What do you know? You know, I don't like him young. I, I like him your age. How old do you think I am? Uh, don't tell me. <laughs> you might guess. I'd say in this light you look about, about 37. Gulp? Oh, you ought to be glad to be 37. Just think, you're starting to get character into your face and a beautiful maturity. I wish I had it. <laughs> I wish you did, too. Mm. Virgie. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Brownie, remind me to have the lights changed. I'll have to make that word private a big neon sign. Shut the door. I found out Cantrell's a nice fellow. You're not going to wreck him. I intend to marry him. And I intend to throw a wrench in it. If I have to tell him everything I know about you. What a beautiful friendship. Tell me, what would you do for this new bosom pal of yours? Just what I'm doing now. But what would you give up? Your freedom? What do you mean? How would you like to remarry me? Love it. Take me off the market and I'm no threat to Cantrell. Good idea? You've got a great sense of humor. What if I said that I still love you? That I never stopped loving you? I'd call you a liar. All right. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to marry Cantrell. Now get out. The minute I hear you're going through with it, I'll go to work on Cantrell. He'll go to work on you, and a lot of things could happen. Why are you doing this? Brad's nothing to you. He's a stranger. But you're not. Oh, Lee, please. It was a long time ago. Forget it. I'm not ever going to forget it. I'm going to keep it right here in the front of my mind. That we were married. We had a child, and you abandoned it. As far as I'm concerned, you killed it. Shut up. Oh, Lee, listen. I've spent a lot of time trying to pull things together. The mistake I made, does a woman ever make it twice? You've got to give me a chance. You've got to give yourself a chance to forget it. If I wanted to forget it, I couldn't. Who do you hate worse? Me or yourself? Just leave Cantrell alone. Following men have been assigned to Operation Deep Freeze. 
Lieutenant McGuire, co-pilot and navigator. Captain Harding, medical officer. Captain Cochran, weather observation. Lieutenant Johnson, communications officer. Master Sergeant Caffey, in charge of Arctic survival. Colonel Gannon will be in charge. Those connected with Operation Deep Freeze, stay. The rest of you may go. Don't look so unhappy. This isn't going to be any picnic. Well, tomorrow you'll take off from Ladfield and fly due north across the Arctic Ocean and over the polar ice cap. Approximately 200 miles from the North Pole, you will land on Ice Island. You will take off at 0800 tomorrow morning. That's all. Colonel Gannon, it's your orders. Thanks again. But why single me out for such a special favor? You think of anybody better qualified? Yeah. We don't want life to get too dull for you around here, Colonel. of the North American continent. Arctic Ocean, straight ahead. Alpha Fox 67835 to Barter Island, over. Barter Island, come in 67835, over. We reached the polar cap, altitude 5,000. Will you relay to Ladfield, over. Operation Deep Freeze to Ladfield. Late from Barter Island. Come in, Deep Freeze. Come in. Deep Freeze to Barter Island. We're approaching Ice Island. Over. How does she look? Cold. And there's nobody home. Over. Deep Freeze to Barter Island. We're coming in for landing. Stand by, Barter Island. Over. Out. Roger. Fasten your safety belt, we're going down. Touchdown, everything's okay. You 
the home fire's burning, we'll see you in six weeks. Out. Now, Lieutenant, take a look around. Yes, sir. Boy, Ice Island is right. I don't think they like us. Or maybe they're Russian seals. Oh, please, Sergeant. Too cold for bum jokes. Where do we get the camp set up? You're talking about my alma mater. Yeah, all the comforts of an ice box. <laughs> it's getting cold out there. <laughs> I got the dope from Fairbanks. Barometer's falling. Deep freeze calling Barker Island. We're in for a blow, Colonel. Wind's hitting 40. Ah, uh, don't worry, Captain. We can take it. Come in, Barter Island. Hello, Deep Freeze. This is Barter Island. Step up your power. We can barely get you. Deep Freeze checking night weather report. Here's Captain Cochran. Cochran speaking. 2,200 hours. Temperature 26 below. Repeat. Temperature 26 below. Barometer 29.51, repeat. Barometer 29.51. Wind 40 knots northwest, repeat. Wind 40 knots northwest. That is all. Roger. Nothing else. Talk to you in the morning. You're doing out. Uh, another day, another buck. Scoot over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Colonel, you know what? I think this job is really aging me. <laughs> I guess that's right. You're a day older every day. Good night, Skip. Good night, Colonel. Laid out before morning. I dropped over to your apartment. Well, if I'd known, I'd have been there. What's up, Brad? Well, I want to talk to you before you get it second hand. Won't you sit down? No, thank you. Maybe I'd better sit down. You're going to marry her, aren't you, Brad? Yeah. I'm sorry. This is a time for you to be happy, not sorry. Well, I'm happy. For me. I guess I can speak a little more freely now. Don't do it, Brad. She's no good. You've no right to say that. Yes, I have. I love you. You know nothing about her. I know this much. What's this? Lee Gannon's affidavit. He signed the original copy. What do you think about that? I think Gannon is lying.
Would you mind waiting outside till I get my makeup on? I want to talk to you just as you are right now. I have a copy of an affidavit made by Lee Gannon. Shall I read it to you? No. Shall I tell you what's in it? Leave it alone, Brad. No, let's start at the beginning. You were in London, a USO and a tenure. He was a flyer. You met him and married. Why? Because I was in love with him. And he was sent off on a mission. A little while later, you found out he'd been shot down. A little while after that, your baby was born, a little girl. What happened to her? It's all written down. Read it. I want to hear it from you. She was in a nursery and the place was bombed. Why was she in a nursery? I put her there. How old was she? Six weeks. Six weeks old baby in a nursery? Why, were you sick? You couldn't take care of her? No, not sick. Why did you do it? She was in the way? It's all there. Just read it. Read it. It doesn't read so well, Virgie. It says when Gannon came home, he found you with another man. It says it was only two months after he was reported dead, and only a couple of weeks after your baby was killed. Oh, please. Is that all you're going to say? What do you want me to do? Cry on your shoulder and say I didn't do those things. I did. I spent years trying to forget I nearly ruined my husband and killed my baby. It's all there in black and white. Nothing is ever black and white, Virgie. Please go away, Brad. We can't be married until this is cleared up. If you want to be a free man, you're off the hook. I don't want to get off the hook. I've heard his side. I want to hear yours. Come down to Kew in lilac time. It isn't far from London. And we will wander hand in hand with love in summer's wonderland. He used to say that to me. There was a lot more, but I've forgotten. It was so very long ago. He said that to me the night I met him. He said that to me the night before he flew away. I've never known it to fail. Every time anything bad happens to me, it's always foggy, like tonight. It was foggy the night I went to the hospital. The cab barely crawled. Pains got worse and worse. I was sure the baby would be born right away. She was. I wish she had been. He wasn't born for five hours, and by that time, I knew he was dead. Give me a cigarette. Thanks. Go on, Tony. Did you ever lose anything you love? Not yet. Well, if you do, don't run for the nearest bottle. Is that what you did? Well, not right away. I went looking for the nearest river first. They fished me out, put me in the hospital. Put my baby in a nursing home. Did you tell your husband this? Yes. He didn't believe me. You know the rest. Yeah, I know the rest. And? I want to marry you. Past and all? Virgie, for me, there is no past. Please go, Brad. I like to do my crying alone. You cried enough for one night. You never cry enough. Please go. Night, Virgie. Deep freeze calling Barger Island. Deep freeze calling Fairbanks. Come in, Bartow Island. Come in, Fairbanks. Come in, anybody. 
can't get through that stack. It's 8 o'clock. That's 24 hours without contact. Well, let's hope the fellow that dreamed up this shack knew what he was doing. Uh, it'll hold all right. If you make contact, let me know. Then we'll go check the weather, Hutchinson. Again? Well, I'll go along with you and check the instruments. down 10 points, wind 76 knots, in case anybody out there is interested. And I was holding down. Time being. Any luck? No, not a thing. Lad Field to Barter Island. When was your last contact with Deep Freeze? Over? More than 36 hours ago. Water Island Cantrell, keep trying. I want to know how they weathered that storm. Over. We'll keep trying. Really fouled up. Maybe worse. We've lost our plane and the weather hut. We seem to be going to pieces. Now, don't say that. What's the matter? Think of the gray hair you'll have before morning. Yeah, if I'm still here in the morning. Who wants gray hair anyway? See if you can get me a hookup to Fairbanks, Johnny. OK, but it's a waste of time. What else have we got to waste? 
There you are. Keep all your fingers crossed. He freeze to Fairbanks. Come in, Fairbanks. You just lost another chunk of it. You better come up here and take us off. Off for what? Solitaire, and I can't play Jen by myself. Who will volunteer? Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, yeah. what our juice? That's fine. How much of this little island paradise do you suppose we have left? When daybreak comes, we can stop guessing. I hope our plane's safe. I wouldn't count on that. Well, they send up another one. How much runway does a C-47 need to land? About 1,500 feet on ice. That's a lot of feet, and that's gin. What do you think? Cylinder head busted. Magnet is gone. We can't fix this. Hey, Colonel, look through the fog. There's the plane. Who's hungry besides me? Come on, sit down, me. For the fourth day, the Arctic has been lashed with one of the worst storms in history. Winds of hurricane intensity make flying impossible. And for the fourth day, not a word has been heard from the six men of the United States Air Force camped on the polar ice cap, 200 miles from the North Pole. Their fate is still unknown. And now for the Washington Wire. You'll fly longitude 150 to the 80th parallel. That's the area the men were last heard from. If you find them, you know what to do. Any questions? On your way and good luck. I don't think we've got anything to worry about. Either they don't find us or they do. Now, if they don't, well, there's nothing we can do about it. If they do, either they don't get us off or they do. Now, if they don't, well, there's nothing we can do about that. So it's like I say, there's, 
There's nothing to worry about. Well, is there? We've got plenty of runway left, Skip. They'll get us off. Sounds like we, we just lost another 50 feet. Rescue to lad. Come in, lad. Over. Let me hear that. This is can't try a lad field. Over. No sign of any island. Over. It's got to be there. What's your DR? Over. Plus 10. Over. We'll try a GHA of 20. Check aboard the correction. Over. Gotcha. Over and out. Okay, gang, let's start a new pattern. Acknowledge. Over. only eight miles in circumference. They should have found it by now. Maybe it's gone. Where are those guys? Rescue to lad. Over. Come in, rescue. Over. Still nothing but ice. Wind velocity is down, but visibility is poor. Gas is running low. I'm going to take a pass on a DR of minus 15 before turning back. Over and out.
Uh, give us a reading on our location. Rescue to lad. Here's your man on a two-way relay. You're on to lad, Colonel Gannon. Hello, Gannon. This is Cantrell. How you doing? Over. We're a little cramped for space, but we're all okay. The island's breaking up fast. We've lost our plane and our power plant. Over. Is room to land a plane there? Over. It's about enough for a whirly bird, if you hurry. Over. Well, a copter is out. You're too far away, and we don't have time to dismantle one and transport it up there. Over. Well, we're open for suggestions. Over. Hang on a minute. Colonel, what's the condition of that uh, glider and hangar four? Fair, I suppose. We haven't done much glider work in recent years. Anybody here qualified to fly it? Besides yourself, I'm sure only of Captain Williams. Uh, Gannon, is there room enough to land a glider? Over. Well, there is if you hurry and if he's a good pilot. Over. Captain Williams will be on his way in 10 minutes with a C-47 on a glider. Over. Well, I don't envy Captain Williams. Over and out. Hangar 4, this is Major Cantrell. I have a C-47 and a glider ready for immediate takeoff. Thank you. Uh, have Captain Williams report to me immediately. Yes, sir. take a C-47 to tow a glider all the way up here? Take about nine hours if they don't have any headwinds. You can make that 700 feet. 680, 656, going, going. But not gone. This is Deep Freeze to Lad Field. Deep Freeze to Lad Field. Come in, Lad Field. Hello, Gannon. This is Cantrell, over. Just lost another 50 feet. Now I envy Captain Williams even less. Williams will get to Barter Island soon. Hang on, over. I wish you were here to hang on with us, Major. Over and out. Brad. Virgie. They're out of bounds. I have a pass from Lieutenant Ross. Well, let's go to my office. Call me if you need me. Right, Major. We found them. I sent a glider to take them off. Will it get there in time? I hope so. Do you really, Brad? Of course I do. You sent him up there. Why? He's a good man. No other reason? Me, for instance? I never mix my personal and professional life, Virgin. Sorry, Brad. I know that. I sent a man up there in a glider to get them off. Stop worrying. I can't. Gannon's nothing to you, or is he? Yes. I love him. I always will. Well, that's that. You knew it. In your heart, you knew it. I suppose I did. I wouldn't be any good for you, Brad. What makes you think he'll take you back? I don't. I'll stick around. You're too good a man, Brad, to go to waste. Virgie. I need this pass to get out. Thanks. If there's any news, call me, please. This is Cantrell. Have an F-82 ready for immediate flight. I'm taking off for of Barter Island.
I've got to get to Farter Island fast. I'll stick with you, Major. Thanks for the lift. Your orders have been changed, Williams. I'm taking over. It's okay, sir. There's always room for the first team. I'm sorry. Say hello to Captain Cochran for me, will you, sir? We flew those crates together. Right on. You trim that mustache, Skip. Yes, sir. Why waste time? You're not going anywhere. Well, even a frozen stiff likes to look his best. We're going to go on to buy a visit from our commanding officer. Kendrell? Nobody but. He's taking the glider over, the man says. Uh, you hear that, boys? The CO's coming. You better dress for the occasion. How much we got left, Sergeant? Six hundred. It must be getting close. Landfield says for us to send a homing signal. Oh! <laughs> Gannon, over. 
How much runway do you need to land and take off in? Over. If I shave it close, 600 feet. Over. 550 feet left, sir. Deep freeze to rescue. Turn around and head for home. We haven't got 600 feet. Over. <laughs> Now you tell me. What's left, over? About 550 feet. Over. What's the wind? What's the wind? About 20 knots northwest. About 20 knots northwest. Over. Better stand clear of that supply hut. I may have to break this gelato. Over now. Yeah, Colonel Nelson wouldn't think so. He saw that. Cochran, Captain Williams tells me you've had glider experience. Yes, in Normandy Beach. You'll find the pickup equipment inside. Rig it 200 feet distant into the wind, 90 feet off the right wing. Yes, sir. Housing broke. Sorry, sir. We're not equipped to fix it. You fellas have skis with you? Yes, sir. sir. Put together a jury rig. Fasten four together. Right, right sir. How are you, sir? Well, well, the voice is familiar, but the face, I, uh... That's old man McGuire. Well, well, you've aged so. Huh. Oh, yes, sir. Well, well thank you, sir. <laughs> what about that bay, Omi? Fresh out. How about bourbon? Did you take over for Williams? I want to make sure you got off this chunk of ice. You're a fool. Should have stayed in bed. Virgie told me her side of the story. Suppose we skip. I wish I could, but I can't. Virgie's a fool too. She loves you. Give me her handkerchief so I can cry. In it. Oh, Lee, grow up. She's a woman. She's a wonderful woman. She's back in Fairbanks eating her heart out for you. She hasn't got it. No. I put in a bid for it. She turned it down. One day I'll show you an affidavit. I've seen it. So has she. There are two sides. Lee, will you stand still long enough to listen? You're breaking my heart. It's impossible. Look, I had a wife and a baby. She had a husband and a baby. And she had neither. You hear Miss Lonely Heart? I come home and okay. find... Okay. That's all you wanted. Ready, sir. I'm coming, Sergeant. Major Cantrell. Skip it, there isn't time. We got a little problem, sir. Every time we stop rocking this crate, the skis freeze fast. I'm able to pull the tow ring out. All right, arrange the signal clause. Yes. Get in, you take the controls. All right, fellas, get in. All right. And what are you going to do? I'm going to rock the boat, Major. But it's Colonel, remember? So I'll rock the boat while you take the controls.
Major. This isn't the way I want it at all. It never has been. It's just that sometimes you can't help the way you feel. I understand, Colonel. I'll see that Virgie does. Watch the Sunday traffic, huh? Fasten those seat belts and brace yourselves when that plane hits you in for a real jolt. Clear out before that C-47 hits. That tail can whip around real mean. I'll be long gone by then. Try to pick up any time you're ready. Send rig for personnel pickup. I'll pick it up at Barter Island. Over now. You can't set it down here. Over. We don't intend to. We're gonna drop a rake for personnel pickup. Ever try it? Or don't they teach you things like that in jets, Major? Over. Colonel, don't you forget it. Over. to rescue. I'm all set. Please remember to handle with care. Over and out.
Rescue to Lab Field. This is Major Cantrell. Deep Freeze rescue is successful. Would you kindly notify Lieutenant Mary Ross? This is Colonel Gannon. Would you tell Virgie... I could use a drink. I think I could use one too. <laughs> <laughs> 